Hey kids, do you like stargazing? Yeah. Do you like poetry? Yeah. Do you like persecuting religious minorities? Um, what? Do you like executing your political rivals? Not really. Do you like murdering dogs? What? No! Well then, you'll love our new leader, Al-Hakim No, 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 no! Crusader Kings 3, a new role-playing strategy game, just launched on Xbox Game Pass for PC. Check out the link below to learn more. Abu Ali Mansur was born in Egypt on August 14th, 985. His father was Al-Aziz Biala, Caliph of the mighty Fatimid Empire, and his mother was... Um... We don't actually know who his mother was, so I'm just gonna call her, um... Stephanie. Now, Abu Mansur wasn't the oldest son, so he wasn't going to be Kale. Oh, his older brother died. However, Abu Mansur's father was still pretty young. Oh, he got a kidney stone. Now, luckily, kidney stones aren't usually fade. Oh, thus, the 11 year old Abu Mansur was proclaimed Caliph in 996 and took the name Al Hakim bi Amr Allah, meaning the ruler by order of God, which I'm not gonna lie is pretty ballsy for a fifth grader. However, since he was literally too young to have a Facebook, a lot of people in the Fatimid court were looking forward to taking advantage of him. The first man to strike was the chief of the local Berbers, Ibn Amar, who coerced Al Hakim into granting him the position of vizier. He then proceeded to effectively usurp the 11 year old and became Caliph in everything but name. And boy was this sweet if you were a Berber. <clears throat> Hello, I was wondering if I could get some gold and a political office please? Yeah, sure, I'm just gonna need your social security num- Hey, wait a minute. All these super illegal political favors are for Berbers, not Barbers! I cut all of your nasty, lice-ridden hair, and this is how you repay me. Al-Hakim was obviously not a huge fan of being bossed around by Ibn Amar, so he did what any other prepubescent teen would do and just freaking murdered him. However, now that Amar was out of the picture, Al-Hakim's tutor and lifelong companion Abu Barjouan took over, but it didn't matter because Al-Hakim just murked him too. The 15-year-old Al-Hakim now ruled the Fatimid Caliphate with complete authority. For real this time. Before we continue, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Xbox Game Pass for PC. Xbox Game Pass for PC gives you access to over 100 great PC games like Crusader Kings 3 and Halo. You also get your first month for just one dollar. <laughs> now, I've only taken an intro level economics course, but I feel like that's a good deal. Specifically, a lot of you would probably like the grand strategy game Crusader Kings 3. It's a sequel to you guessed it, Crusader Kings 2, and it's pretty good. In it, you can play as a leader of pretty much any medieval country and conquer the world, or you could play as some lowborn baron and not conquer the world. After all, the real conquest is the friends we made along the way. Anyway, uh, where were we? After all the shenanigans of his childhood, Al-Hakim was pretty paranoid about giving people power. However, he solved this problem by just killing all his advisors every few years. At first, Al-Hakim appointed a lot of Christians to important positions. His father had been pretty religiously tolerant, so Al-Hakim was too, which is pretty respectable considering the time period when they lived. Unfortunately, Al-Hakim's subjects weren't exactly on the same page as their leader. The 11th century was a time of rising anti-Christian sentiment in Egypt, and Al-Hakim being all buddy-buddy with the Jesus people was not a good look. Compounding this further was the fact that the Fatimids were Shia Muslims who ruled over an overwhelmingly Sunni population. The animosity between these two groups is hella complex, but for now all you need to know is that the Shia and Sunni are different and they don't get along very well. This all came to a boiling point in 1003, in a pretty wacky series of events. Your Highness, we, your Muslim lawyers, heard that your Christian scribe is a traitor. Wow, who'd have thought? Well, I guess I'll execute him right away without any kind of trial or investigation. 
Your Highness, I, your sister, heard that your scribe was actually innocent and that these two lawyers were lying. Really. Execute them too. The part of this that upset people was that after he killed the Muslim lawyers for lying to him, Al-Hakim replaced them with Christians, so naturally the citizens of Cairo rioted. In order to calm the crowd down, Al-Hakim did the logical thing and just started destroying a bunch of churches, but then he also built a bunch more, so even Stephen I guess. The next year, in 1004, Al-Hakim decided that he really wanted to stick it to the Christians and gave them an all-black dress code. They also could no longer ride horses or be rowed across the Nile for some reason. Now, by this point, you're probably thinking, but Connor, I thought Al-Hakim liked the Christians. And, uh, yeah. No one's really figured this guy out yet. Throughout all of this, the Sunnis were pretty conflicted. On one hand, Al-Hakim was a dirtbag to the Christians, but on the other hand, he literally had a pre-built cage in his palace for when he captured the Sunni religious leader. Seeing the Sunnis' hesitation, Al-Hakim decided to make it easier for them to hate him, and banned the game of chess for being too Sunni, made all of the Sunni caliph's favorite vegetables illegal, banned alcohol, destroyed all the country's grapes, unbanned alcohol, banned it again, and then put Bill boards on Sunni mosques that made fun of the Sunni caliphs. It was at this time when Al-Hakim was hated by pretty much everybody that a dude from North Africa showed up named... Oh boy. Abu Raqqa claimed that he should be caliph because his bloodline was better or something and launched a rebellion. Nevertheless, after an impressive start, Abu Raqqa was defeated by Al-Hakim's forces, tied to a camel with a monkey trained to whip him, and then beheaded. With that out of the way, Al-Hakim finally decided that maybe he should go easier on his citizens, except no he didn't, because in 1009 he demolished the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, which is like the most important Christian church in the world. However, being a deranged despot is a lot of work, and starting in 1011, Al-Hakim decided that he actually didn't like all the fancy stuff about being caliph. He started riding his donkey everywhere and made it illegal to bow before him. He also would only eat simple meals that his mother, um, Stephanie, cooked for him. What do you mean you don't have time to cook for me? Well, you know, I have hobbies to do, friends to see, errands to run, but y you're a woman. Well, of course, silly, but I'm not a prisoner in the house. Now hear me out. If you don't make women's shoes, women will have to stay home. This was just the start of Al-Hakim's repression of women. He made it illegal for women to sing, illegal for women to dance, illegal for women to cry at funerals, and illegal for women to enter cemeteries. He also publicly drowned any woman caught doing the no pants dance before marriage. Then, when some women protested by going to a public bath, Al-Hakim had the doors locked and didn't open them until the women inside had starved to death. What? You thought he was gonna give in to their demands like a simp? His actions after this are even more bizarre. He ordered markets to be opened for 24 hours a day, and then massacred all of Cairo's dogs, not once, but twice, because their barking annoyed him. Around this time in 1018, a bunch of weird missionaries showed up and started telling people that Al-Hakim was actually God incarnate. Al-Hakim neither confirmed or denied this, but when he found a satirical poem that made fun of his divinity, he burned down a third of the city, so take that as you will. However, Amidst all this chaos, Al-Hakim found solace in stargazing. On the night of February 13th, 1021, he left the city with no security to do just that. I'm sorry sir, but we can't let you leave the city without protection. Protection? <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you think the f***ing donkey is for? The next day, a single donkey was found wandering in the mountains outside of Cairo. Al-Hakim bi Amarala was never seen or heard from again. Today, over one million Druids believe that he will return one day to save the world. 
which, okay, like, I'm sorry if this is offensive, but you really want this guy to be the one to do that? 